In 1839, the colonial secretary in London, Lord Normanby, instructed Captain William Hobson to sail to New Zealand and with the consent of the local chiefs obtain sovereignty of a part or all of the country. Hobson was instructed that all dealings with Māori must be conducted on the principles of sincerity, justice and good faith. He was also told that Māori must not be allowed to enter into any contracts in which they might unknowingly come out worse off. When Hobson sailed to New Zealand, the New Zealand company ship the Tory, full of settlers, was already on its way. Hobson was instructed to gain land for future settlements, but only in those places where Māori chose to provide it. Land buying agents, already in New Zealand, then rushed to buy as much land as they could, thinking Hobson would put a stop to them. It is thought that the combined claims of the land agents amounted to more than New Zealand's total land area. Captain Hobson arrived in the Bay of Islands on January the 29th, 1840, and on the 30th he made a proclamation that private land purchases were now banned. Hobson met with the British resident James Busby and invited the chiefs of the area to a meeting at Busby's house on February the 5th. Hobson got assistance from his secretary, James Freeman, and Busby in preparing a draft treaty. On February the 4th, Hobson handed his draft of the treaty to the missionary Henry Williams and his son Edward for translation into Māori. The chiefs debated the relative merits of a treaty until the next day, when they declared they were ready to sign it. The first to sign it on February the 6th, 1840, was Honeheke and he was followed by about 40 other chiefs. By September 1840, some 500 chiefs, including an estimated 13 women, had signed copies of the treaty around the country. Nearly all signed the Māori version. Reassured that their mana and authority would be strengthened, many chiefs supported the agreement. Some chiefs signed while remaining uncertain, others refused or had no chance to sign.